A very warm welcome to Daily Dispatch, powered by HSBC. I'm Priya Shade, and joining me on this conversation is Mohit Dubey from Chalon. Thank you, Mohit, for joining us today. I want to begin by talking to you a little bit about the acquisition. Uh, Chalo has acquired Vogo. Tell us a little bit about the deal and what it really means for you. Hey, Priya, thank you for having me here. And uh, you know, you've been doing a great job with DD. Actually, I'm a big fan of it. Okay, so coming back to uh, Chalo and Vogo. you know chalo fundamentally exist and you guys have written a lot of story about us so fundamentally exist to solve daily commute which is a really really large problem and we decided to solve that problem by using bus as a main mile you know and solve with existing buses first but when you come out of the bus you don't have your home or office next to the bus stop and you would have to cover you know in many cases more than half a kilometer and that's really really travel uh, some given how india's climate is right we are in extreme climate and therefore vogo makes sense because they can really power the first and last mile for everybody who comes out of the bus for chalo uh, you know on the deal construct uh, we are not disclose the details but largely think about it like this chalo has now grown three times from up september 2021 to march now right by we are at close to 183 million dollar in gross ticketing value and this also mean more than 100 million rides on chalo platform if i have 100 million rides coming out of it coming out of buses then it makes so much more sense to power you know these rides and before us uh, before covid you know vogo was delivering close to 50000 rides a day and uh, they 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 are scaling up very very well but what will happen now is they will focus only on electric vehicles and in respect of the you know the form of the vehicle they could be across different but they'll focus on electric vehicle and all first and last mile and if you also see most of the companies build around first and last mile in the world they've been built around public transport and india's public transport is not rails they are not metros they are buses because buses are 40 times bigger than metros metros are just half a billion dollars you know in the total ticketing value buses are 23 billion dollars and if you were to build a last mile first mile company it has to be built around buses i think i spoke a lot let me take a pause there if you have something else to ask Right, uh, Mohit. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, I want to understand, you know, when it comes to the integration of the two businesses, uh, how will it, you know, go about it, and uh, you know, what is the kind of expansion that you're looking at in terms of cities, in terms of reaching more consumers? Sure. Let me answer the second part first. Uh, Chalo has been expanding, as I said, right? We have grown three x in last six months. So we continue to go deeper in our markets and also open up new markets. We just opened up Maharashtra. We are looking at Tamil Nadu now. We have been in Assam. We have been in Karnataka, Kerala, and these are all our core markets. So we'll continue to do more and more there. Uh, for Vogo, they have been in Bangalore and Hyderabad. but they will expand to other cities especially the chalo cities so that's very obvious and they will also look at north uh, given the business model now they have they can open up a lot more cities in north as well uh, you do not want to do, you do not want to integrate two sub scale businesses chalo has 1.5% market share of the total buses in this country right we sound like the largest at 100 million rights priya chalo would be bigger than all other mobility companies combined at their peak not after covid at their peak but we are still 1.5% of you know of the total buses in this country so we are really really small and tiny and so is vogo you know with 50000 rights a day what are we talking about so two sub scale companies you don't want to put them together and integrate you know very uh, holistically and then try and have more problem at hand so we'll continue to build vogo as a brand can you to build vogo as a model apis can talk to each other product can get integrated at somebody using a chalo app can also book a vogo or chalo card can be used to book a vogo ride and vice versa those are easy things to solve for that i will do irrespective of any other integration as well uh, in a last mile first mile partnership but other than that we'll continue to have two brands and two companies and build them separately if that answers your question Right. Uh, thanks for that, Mohit. Uh, I want to understand in terms of the future roadmap for Chalo. What have you planned out there? Um, are there adjacencies that you'd like to get into? What kind of business model have you shaped up, uh, and uh, your plan for 2022 going forward? Sure. So as I said, you know, we are really tiny. At 100 million rides are really nothing. You know, our goal is our big, hairy, audacious goal over the next four or five years to get to 100 million rides every day. And one of that milestone would be to get to, you know. Uh, We are seven thousand buses. Our goal is to get to the fifteen thousand buses, you know, before the year end. So, let's at least double from where we are today. And the potential is to really grow this number significantly, very, very large. But what has really happened, Priya, is that we have also been very, very lucky to open up Bangkok and Manila for us 
as as market and these markets have very similar problem as india have you know people are waiting at the bus stop not knowing when the bus will come everybody has to buy the ticket in cash so there's no customized plan etc etc that's a very similar problem operator again has to deal with pilferage you know visibility on their operations so you know when we digitize this whole category is relevant for many emerging markets so we'll open up international presence as well and you know double down on that besides going uh, deeper into these market the other thing here is that in many of the markets where we focused on our digital penetration the number of rights which happens on the chalo app on the chalo card has been like a 20 to 35% in some of our key markets we want to make sure that every market that we operate in gets to these kind of numbers and the one thing you would love to hear is that you know in every time we go to europe and even korea and many other markets you will see buses running without conductor you will see buses which are completely you know sort of digital at times and our goal is to really pilot in multiple markets to say how do we run cashless buses how we run 100% digital buses which buses you know where you can just on board and pay using an app or a card and literally have a seamless experience we will literally double down on the product side then international side and then go deeper in our existing markets absolutely uh, you know in terms of uh, fundraise i believe you did raise some funds uh, last year uh, what is the plan going forward you have an aggressive expansion uh, strategy that you put into place so what kind of funds will be required to really scale up the business from here on yeah pia chalo the potential to become a you know uh, to do something like a 10 billion dollar in gross ticketing value over next 4 5 years so building such a large business right it will require a lot of capital uh, the good thing is our business model allows us to stay contribution positive you know from day one on every bus that we operate and therefore it doesn't really suck in capital like many mobility company our cac the cost of acquiring a customer has been literally zero because every customer that you want to target is sitting inside the bus or standing at the bus stop we can go out and literally acquire them at that place using our in bus branding you know outside bus branding bus stop branding etc etc so cac has been low we have been contribution positive given the business model that we built in so it does require lesser amount of capital than what a typical mobility company would require but nonetheless it will have you know huge uh, and today you know it right you cover it every day every company is in a perpetual fundraise mode you know either they want to go out and do it or there are so much more inbounds we've been lucky to have very very good uh, investor backing us up uh, and uh, so you know the internal fundraise is anyways available and we can do it any time for example we did something for uh, powering our acquisition that we did recently but in general you know we would uh, we would go and raise money whenever we need to actually i don't have anything very concrete on the plan today but there enough inbounds if i announce some day don't be surprised because you know these discussions happen all the time right if i have questions for you, let you go on the revenue front what kind of revenue targets have you set for yourself so i said we are at a 183 million dollar gross ticketing value that's the number that the matrix to look at because it gives you the size of the business you know typically in the markets uh, we operate between 7% to 16% gross take you know so the, of this amount any number between these would be our our, our take rate actually so chalo would be easily around about 13 to 15 million dollar revenue run rate today uh, from where we are and this is growing very fast here so the good thing is every time we add a bus it adds up to the gtv it's up to our revenue it just adds up to our contribution margin and our same will happen with bogo and it's happening with shuttle as well now all right mohit thank you very much for joining us today it's been a pleasure speaking with you thanks so much for your time